We're going to add some more to our design in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at what we have and see how we can make it a little bit better. So here in item row.swift, you can see we have the item name and the item price. But the item name is clearly the most important thing here. In this row, what is the actual kind of food they want to look at? Um, but it has the same font, style, and size, and so forth as the price below. We can, if we want to, bring it up in size, type, weight, and similar using a font modifier, which accepts any of Apple's dynamic type font types. For example, we could say, I want text item name to have dot font dot headline. Give me a headline font for this. And you see it's a little bit bigger, a little bit bolder, out of the box. As for this picture, it looks okay, it looks fine. But with a little bit of love, it could look a lot better. For example, we could apply a modifier called clip shape, which uh, can clip this thing to any shape you want. We could say, I want this to be a circle shape. And you're gonna get a circular image down here. Or we could apply this uh, clip shape modifier to it, uh, then overlay on top of that another shape draw something around it. We could say, I want to overlay on this thing another circle. And I want to stroke this thing with color dot gray and line width of two. So I want a two point gray stroke overlaid over my thumbnail image. Boom. So it looks a little bit nicer. Okay, let's try something more complex. In menu.json, uh, you'll see a variety of data here. You'll also see restrictions for these foods. So maple French toast uh, is uh, gluten and uh, vegetarian. We have uh, dairy, gluten, vegetarian. We have uh, dairy and nuts and similar. So these are little symbols you want to show on the menu to give folks an idea what these things uh, mean. And we can use these to create colored icons right in our UI, showing what they mean on the screens. They can see, ah, oh, this one's D, G, and V, whatever. That's for me or not for me or who knows what. So we're gonna show zero or more of these things right in our layout. Now, the first thing we're going to do is make a dictionary of colors we'll use for each restriction type. So they're color coded on the screen so they can see at glance what each one means. So we'll say uh, static let colors I don't need static, let's do let equals uh, string color. And D will be dot purple. Uh, G will be black. N will be red. S will be blue for seafood. And V will be green. So we've got a, a dictionary now of strings and colors which can match up against the same strings in our JSON file, D, G, N, S, and V. Second, we want to loop over each of the restrictions in the current menu item and then draw each one in the text view. So we have uh, after the V stack, still inside the H stacks, so it will be to the right of the V stack. I will say for each item dot restrictions, restriction in, text of restriction. Show this thing has attached to it. And it's gonna plain to us here because our code won't compile, which is fine. This thing has to be identifiable. What makes each item in here unique? Just like we had in our menu data and our order data before. Now, we haven't got a custom type here. We couldn't, you know, we went before we went to menu and add identifiable here and here. That was fine when it was our custom type, but now it's strings. We don't own string. What makes a string unique? Well, there's only one answer here, which is that we only have a string, hello, or maple French toast, or DGVN, whatever it happens to be. That's our string. The only thing that's about the string that is unique is the string itself. If you have the same string twice, it's the same string. There's no difference between them. They're exactly the same, just a few letters, right? So we, we, we can't really, uh, identify them in any way other than the string itself. And so we're going to tell Swift UI that the string itself is the unique thing. There's D and G and V and N and S and so forth, but 
they each one only appears once in the thing. They won't appear twice. They are unique. And so we can say for each of this thing, the ID for this, the unique identifier is backslash dot self. The identity key path in Swift. The thing itself is unique. That's what it means. And with that in place, we can press Option Command P again. Hopefully, boom, here's G and V. This thing's gluten-free and vegetarian. So you can see that this has worked very nicely. Of course, it's pretty dull having just G and V like that. So let's spice it up a little bit. Let's say uh, we want a uh, font of caption. So it's a slightly smaller font. Let's give it a nice font weight of black. Really dense, dense, strong font. Let's add some padding around it. It's a bit of spacing around it, like that. Let's give this thing a background. I'm going to say it's going to be colors of its restriction. So if it's red, use the red color or black, whatever, right? But I'll use a default color of black. So we haven't, don't find it and one that's in there, use black. We'll do a clip shape of circle, so it's circular. And then a foreground color of uh, white. Oops, so it's white text, so it stands out. There we go. So we've now got a small, very bold font, padded out with a nice background color behind it, clipped to be a circle and white text, all in one. And we're gonna do one more thing here before we finish with the design of this item row. We're gonna force all this restriction text, all these G, V, N, S, whatever, um, to the side. So it's spaced apart from the rest of our row. So we picture these two item texts, big gap, then restrictions on the side. And Swift UI has a dedicated view for this called Spacer. I want you to place this after the V stack before that inner for each. So a Spacer right here. And you see now it gets pushed edge to edge. It'll automatically take up all available free space, forcing the other things apart by however much is available. So it'll go right to the leading edge here and right to the trailing edge here. Now I go ahead and run the project, press Command R. Hopefully, I agree you think it looks pretty good. There we go. Boom. Now you can see this, the, the padding here, uh, it looks good. But it's quite a lot of padding. And we can control that. We could say I want a specific amount of padding. I want to have padding five. So smaller uh, circular areas around this thing. Yeah, perfect, great. So at this point, we've now got this lovely scrolling list of items, big spacer, pictures, gray stroke, different nutrition labels, two kinds of stack and more. If we have come from UIKit, think how long it had taken to build that with UI table view cell. The answer is a lot more code than you expect right here.